Building a basic home hydroponic system like this is really easy and the benefits when you get involved in hydroponics are huge. I'm here at Builders Express in Pine Town with Showfield who designed and built this and when I saw it I realized I had to do a video for you. Showfield, what inspired you to get into this? My main inspiration for building this was the fact that I don't have a garden. Where I live, there's no soil, it's paved in the front and paved in the back. And I found this was the best way in terms of saving space and having the vegetables and herbs that I need. So I've done all the shopping we need, let's head back to the workshop and show you how to build this. Right, here we are. Now what this is, is a storeboard trestle with four one meter lengths of 110 millimeter PVC pipe mounted with gutter brackets. Each one of these is interlinked with electrical conduit piping that all flows back to the water reservoir where a water feature pump pumps the water back to the top and the cycle continues. We've cored holes for our seedling pots and being a closed loop system, it means we can put fertilizer or plant food in and all the plants will get the equal amount. It also reduces the evaporation. Now let's start by making the structure. We need to mount the gutter brackets onto the trestle. For this, you'll need a store-bought trestle, eight gutter brackets, a packet of five by 25 millimeter wood screws, a drill driver with a Phillips bit, tape measure, pencil, and a spirit level. Now personally, I would treat the trestle, it just makes it that much more tolerant to the elements. I've painted this one with one coat of primer, two coats of water-based paint. It just makes it look neat and it makes it that much more tolerant. So the first thing we need to do is mount the gutter brackets to the trestle. I'm gonna offset them about 60 millimeters from the top. I do find it easier at this stage to work with the trestle lying flat on the table. Then using the drill driver, I'm going to secure these with the five by 25 millimeter wood screws. Right, first two are done. Now for the two lower brackets, I need to leave a gap of about 30 centimeters from the bottom of this bracket to the top of the next one. So using the tape measure, measure and mark 30 centimeters. And the great thing with these wood screws when working with soft pine is you don't need to drill a pilot hole. They make their own hole as they go. And then the same for the other bracket. There we go. Now to use our spirit level to make sure that they are level. And the great thing with these brackets is you can adjust them on the slotted groove. Right, so I'm happy that my gutter brackets are level. Next step is to mount the gutter brackets on the reverse side. However, we need a gradual fall to be able to transfer the water. Here we went down an offset of six centimeters. I'm gonna add five centimeters to that and go down 11 centimeters on the back. So with my tape measure, measure and mark 11 centimeters on both sides. And as we did earlier, using the five by 25 millimeter screws, attach the gutter brackets with your drill driver. And again, using my spirit level, I can check their level and adjust it if I need to. Now here we can see we've got a nice fall between the first and second channel. On the reverse side, we're only gonna drop down 20 centimeters, which will give us a fall into the last channel. So with your measuring tape, measure and mark 20 centimeters from the bottom of the top bracket. And then fasten those brackets into place. So that's our frame done. Next is to moving on to making the channels. And for that, you will need three two meter lengths of 110 millimeter PVC pipe, a hacksaw, a spirit level, a drill driver with a 64 millimeter hole saw, a small piece of sandpaper, a utility knife, tape measure, and a pencil. So for the channels, we need four one meter lengths of the 110 mil pipe. So taking two of the two pipes, I'm going to measure, mark, and cut them in half. So there's our four pieces of pipe cut for the channels. Now the next step is to work out where to drill the holes to accommodate the pots. So each of these lengths is a meter. Now I've catered for six holes, which means we need to take a meter divided by seven, which will give us even spacing. A thousand divided by seven is 142 point something. Let's round it off to 140 millimeters. So using my spirit level, I'm going to mark a straight line along the top and then every 14 centimeters, a mark for where we're going to drill. Right, all of those are marked. Now using the drill driver with the 64 millimeter hole saw, we can start drilling those holes. At this stage, I should probably tell you, you might need a vacuum cleaner. Right, using the utility knife and the sandpaper, we can neaten up these rough edges. Now the reason we drill and clean up the holes before we put the end caps on is that once they're glued on, it's very difficult to get the filings out and that's just gonna block up the pump. This is the part about DIY my wife does not enjoy, is the mess. Now that the holes in the channels have been drilled and cleaned, we can move on to the last stage of the preparation, which is the plumbing. And for that you will need 910 mil end caps, 110 mil T-piece, a length of 20 mil conduit piping, together with six 20 millimeter 90 degree bends, and six 20 millimeter male screw adapters. You'll also need some PVC weld, 
a drill driver with a 90mm spade bit, pipe cutters, tape measure and a pencil. Now on seven of the end caps we need to drill a 19mm hole with the spade bit to accommodate the screw and adapter. Now this hole needs to be slightly off center so that the base of the adapter lines up with the center of the end cap. Now with the 19mm spade bit and the drill driver I'm going to drill offset holes through seven of the end caps. Now you could measure this, I'm just going to eyeball it and ensure that the base of the hole is in the center of the end cap. Always remember to use a scrap piece of timber underneath so you don't damage your workbench. Now onto each of these screw adapters I'm just going to apply a little bit of PVC weld around the thread, through the hole and tighten it with the nut on the inside. That's it, all six thread adapters done. The last end cap with the hole is for the top of the reservoir and does not need a thread adapter. Now two of the channels get these end caps on both sides. These two channels will only have an end cap with the screw thread adapter on one side. So let's get our channels and glue on the end caps, remembering the orientation of the screw thread must be on the higher side. Now for the water reservoir, we need to add a T-piece onto one of the channels that does not have an end cap. If you're using these fittings with a rubber seal, it does help to put some dishwashing liquid on, helps them slide together. Right, that's on. Next step, let's bring in our trestle and start positioning our channels in place. The reservoir goes on the lowest level and the last tube with only one end cap is our inlet. Next, we can start doing the plumbing that joins our channels together. And for that, we're going to cut a short piece of conduit about three, three and a half centimeters long and glue it into the thread adapter. While the PVC weld on the small pieces we've just glued and dries, I need to get the reservoir onto the T-piece. Now the easiest way to do this is to measure the distance from where the pipe would end to the workbench. 23 centimeters. So off our last length of tubing, let's cut a piece 23 centimeters long and get it into here. Now that I've inserted the piece that we've just cut for the reservoir, I can glue on an end cap. Now we can do the plumbing that joins our chambers together. So using the 90 degree pieces onto the short piece we glued in earlier, measuring the distance in between and cutting a piece of conduit will ensure that the water can flow through. So I'm going to put the two 90 degree bends onto the short piece of conduit we glued in earlier, but I'm not gluing these in place yet. Once I've measured and cut the adjoining conduit, I can glue it all together and make sure I have the right angle. Just make sure that you measure for your conduit from here and not from here. Perfect, I can see that's going to fit. I'm happy to glue everything now. So the plumbing is done between the first and second chamber. Next will be the plumbing between the second and third and the third back to the fourth, which flows into the reservoir. All that's left to do is to glue an end cap onto the top of the first or highest chamber with a hole drilled at the very top. This is for our pump feed. So using a 19 mm spade bit, I'm gonna drill a hole fairly close to the edge. While that dries, all that's left now is to finish off the reservoir. So we're gonna cut a short piece of 110 pipe together with the end cap we drilled earlier and put them together. Now we're not gluing this end cap on because we want easy access to the pump. So this is a submersible water feature pump which does 400 liters per hour up to a maximum of 0.9 meters head. So I'm just going to push the clear tubing onto the nozzle and pop that in the reservoir. Now to accommodate for the cable coming out, I'm just gonna cut a little slot in this tube. Now I can thread the clear tube through the hole in the end cap and into chamber number one. And that's it. All we need now is some water and some plants. Let's get this outside and get it running. Now this system takes approximately 30 liters, which is important to know if you're gonna be adding fertilizer. NutriFeed is a hydroponic friendly fertilizer and the instructions on the back tell us how much we need to add depending on our water volume. A simple hydroponic setup that is ideal if you have a small garden or no garden at all. Even if you live in an apartment, this will fit perfectly on the veranda. Now everything we've used today is available at Builders, in store or online at builders.co.za. For more videos like this, check out the blog on the website. Get to Builders, get it done.